The Bengal Presidency 1757 to 1912, later reorganized as the Bengal Province 1912 to 1947, was once the largest subdivision presidency of British India, with its seat in Calcutta, now Kolkata. It was primarily centered in the Bengal region. At its territorial peak in the 19th century, the presidency extended from the present-day Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province of Pakistan in the west to Burma, Singapore and Penang in the east. The governor of Bengal was concurrently the viceroy of India for many years. Most of the presidency's territories were eventually incorporated into other British Indian provinces and crown colonies. In 1905, Bengal proper was partitioned, with Eastern Bengal and Assam headquartered in Dhaka and Shillong summer capital. British India was reorganised in 1912 and the presidency was reunited into a single Bengali-speaking province. The Bengal Presidency was established in 1765, following the defeat of the last independent Nawab of Bengal at the Battle of Plassey in 23 June 1757, and the Battle of Buxar in of October 1764. Bengal was the economic, cultural and educational hub of the British Raj. It was the centre of the late 19th and early 20th century Bengali Renaissance and a hotbed of the Indian independence movement. The partition of British India in 1947 resulted in Bengal's division on religious grounds, between the Indian state of West Bengal and East Bengal, which became the nation of Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> Administrative reform and the permanent settlement Under Warren Hastings British Governorship 1772 the consolidation of British imperial rule over Bengal was solidified, with the conversion of a trade area into an occupied territory under a military civil government, while the formation of a regularised system of legislation was brought in under John Shore. Acting through Lord Cornwallis, then Governor-General, he ascertained and defined the rights of the landholders over the soil. These landholders under the previous system had started, for the most part, as collectors of the revenues, and gradually acquired certain prescriptive rights as quasi-proprietors of the estates entrusted to them by the government. In 1793 Lord Cornwallis declared their rights perpetual, and gave over the land of Bengal to the previous quasi-proprietors or zamindars, on condition of the payment of a fixed land tax. This piece of legislation is known as the permanent settlement of the land revenue. It was designed to introduce ideas of property rights to India, and stimulate a market in land. The former aim misunderstood the nature of landholding in India, and the latter was an abject failure. The Cornwallis Code, while defining the rights of the proprietors, failed to give adequate recognition to the rights of the under-tenants and the cultivators. This remained a serious problem for the duration of British rule, as throughout the Bengal Presidency riots peasants found themselves oppressed by rack-renting landlords, who knew that every rupee they could squeeze from their tenants over and above the fixed revenue demanded from the government represented pure profit. Furthermore, the permanent settlement took no account of inflation, meaning that the value of the revenue to government declined year by year, whilst the heavy burden on the peasantry grew no less. This was compounded in the early 19th century by compulsory schemes for the cultivation of opium and indigo, the former by the state, and the latter by British planters most especially in Turhut district in Bihar. Peasants were forced to grow a certain area of these crops, which were then purchased at below market rates for export. This added greatly to rural poverty. So unsuccessful was the permanent settlement that it was not introduced in the northwestern provinces taken from the Marathas during the campaigns of Lord Lake and Arthur Wellesley after 1831, in Punjab after its conquest in 1849, or in Oudh which was annexed in 1856. These regions were nominally part of the Bengal Presidency, but remained administratively distinct. The area of the presidency under direct administration was sometimes referred to as Lower Bengal to distinguish it from the presidency as a whole. Officially Punjab, Agra and Allahabad had lieutenant governors subject to the authority of the governor of Bengal in Calcutta, but in practice they were more or less independent. The only all-presidency institutions which remained were the Bengal Army and the Civil Service. The Bengal Army was finally amalgamated into the new British Indian Army in 1904–5, after a lengthy struggle over its reform between Lord Kitchener, the Commander-in-Chief, and Lord Curzon, the Viceroy. 1905 Partition of Bengal 
The partition of the large province of Bengal, which was decided upon by Lord Curzon, and Kayan Adin Ahmed, the Chief Secretary of Bengal carried into execution in October 1905. The Chittagong, Dhaka and Rajshahi divisions, the Malda district and the states of Hill Tripura, Silhet and Komila were transferred from Bengal to a new province, Eastern Bengal and Assam. The five Hindi-speaking states of Chota Nagpur, namely Changbakar, Korea, Serguha, Udaipur and Jashpur state, were transferred from Bengal to the central provinces, and Sambalpur state and the five Oriya states of Bamra, Rairakal, Sunpur, Patna and Kalahandi were transferred from the central provinces to Bengal. The province of West Bengal then consisted of the 33 districts of Burdwan, Burbam, Bankura, Midnapur, Huli, Howrah, 24 Perganas, Calcutta, Nadia, Murshidabad, Jessore, Kulna, Patna, Gaya, Shahabad, Saran, Champaran, Muzaffarpur, Darbanga, Mongar, Bagalpur, Purnaya, Santhal Perganas, Cuttack, Balasore, Angle and Kandmal, Puri, Sambalpur, Singbam, Hazarabah, Ranchi, Palamau, and Manbam. The princely states of Sikkim and the tributary states of Odisha and Chota Nagpur were not part of Bengal, but British relations with them were managed by its government. The Indian Councils Act 1909 expanded the legislative councils of Bengal and Eastern Bengal and Assam provinces to include up to 50 nominated and elected members, in addition to three ex officio members from the Executive Council. Bengal's Legislative Council included 22 nominated members, of which not more than 17 could be officials, and two nominated experts. Of the 26 elected members, one was elected by the Corporation of Calcutta, six by municipalities, six by district boards, one by the University of Calcutta, five by landholders, four by Muslims, two by the Bengal Chamber of Commerce, and one by the Calcutta Trades Association. Eastern Bengal and Assam's Legislative Council included 22 nominated members, of which not more than 17 be officials and one representing Indian commerce, and two nominated experts. Of the 18 elected members, three were elected by municipalities, five by district and local boards, two by landowners, four by Muslims, two by the tea interest, one by the jute interest, and one by the commissioners of the port of Chittagong. The partition of Bengal proved highly controversial, as it resulted in a largely Hindu West Bengal and a largely Muslim East. Serious popular agitation followed the step, partly on the grounds that this was part of a cynical policy of divide and rule, and partly that the Bengali population, the centre of whose interests and prosperity was Calcutta, would now be divided under two governments, instead of being concentrated and numerically dominant under the one, while the bulk would be in the new division. In 1906–1909 the unrest developed to a considerable extent, requiring special attention from the Indian and home governments, and this led to the decision being reversed in 1911. Topic. Reorganization of Bengal, 1912 At the Delhi Durbar on December 12, 1911, King George V announced the transfer of the seat of the Government of India from Calcutta to Delhi, the reunification of the five predominantly Bengali-speaking divisions into a presidency or province of Bengal under a governor, the creation of a new province of Bihar and Orissa under a lieutenant governor, and that Assam province would be reconstituted under a chief commissioner. On March 21, 1912 Thomas Gibson Carmichael was appointed Governor of Bengal. Prior to that date the Governor-General of India had also served as Governor of Bengal Presidency. On March 22, the provinces of Bengal, Bihar and Orissa and Assam were constituted. The Government of India Act 1919 increased the number of nominated and elected members of the Legislative Council from 50 to 125, and the franchise was expanded. Bihar and Orissa became separate provinces in 1936. Bengal remained in its 1912 boundaries until independence in 1947, when it was again partitioned between the dominions of India and Pakistan. Topic. Diarchy 1920 British India's Montague Kelmsford reforms of 1919, enacted in 1921, expanded the Bengal Legislative Council to 140 members to include more elected Indian members. The reforms also introduced the principle of diarchy, whereby certain responsibilities such as agriculture, health, education, and local government, were transferred to elected ministers. However, the important portfolios like finance, police and irrigation were reserved with members of the Governor's Executive Council. 
Some of the prominent ministers were Surendranath Banerjee, Local Self Government and Public Health 1921 to 1923, Sir Provash Chunder Mitter, Education 1921 to 1924, Local Self Government, Public Health, Agriculture and Public Works 1927-1928, Nawab Sayyid Nawab Ali Choudhury, Agriculture and Public Works, and A K Fazlul Huck, Education 1924. Bupendra Nath Bose and Sir Abdur Rahim were executive members in the Governor's Council. Provincial autonomy The Government of India Act 1935 made the Bengal Presidency into a regular province, enlarged the elected provincial legislature and expanded provincial autonomy vis-à-vis -vis the central government. In the elections held in 1937, the Indian National Congress won a maximum of 54 seats but declined to form the government. The Krishak Praja Party of A.K. Fazlul Huq with 36 seats was able to form a coalition government along with the All India Muslim League. Huq's government fell in 1943 and a Muslim League government under Sir Kawaja Nazimuddin as Prime Minister was formed. After the end of World War II, elections were held in 1946 where the Muslim League won a majority of 113 seats out of 250 in the Assembly and a government under Hussein Shaheed Surawardi was formed. See also List of Governors of Bengal Advocate General of Bengal References Topic. Works cited This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Bengal. Encyclopædia Britannica 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. C.A. Bailey Indian Society and the Making of the British Empire Cambridge 1988. C. E. Buckland Bengal under the Lieutenant Governors London 1901 Sir James Bordelon, The Partition of Bengal London, Society of Arts 1905 Susil Chaudhary from Prosperity to Decline. 18th Century Bengal Delhi 1995 Sir William Wilson Hunter, Annals of Rural Bengal London 1868, and Odisha London 1872 P. J. Marshall Bengal, The British Bridgehead 1740-1828 Cambridge 1987 Ray, Indrajit Bengal Industries and the British Industrial Revolution 1757-1857 Routledge 2011 John R. McLean Land and Local Kingship in 18th Century Bengal Cambridge 1993 External links Coins of the Bengal Presidency